So the next thing we'll do uh, is to use Gecko to calculate the um, daylighting within our building. So I'm just going to hide a few of these things. I'll keep them around just so we build up this kind of analysis file. Um, and then I'll just show again some of our original geometry. So for daylighting, the way it works is it will basically calculate the amount of light um, falling onto any surfaces within our building uh, based on the fenestrations around it. And there's a lot of ways to do lighting analysis. You can do daylighting, you can do artificial lighting. All this is supported by Ecotech. The simplest case that we'll do is daylighting taken just external light. So we're just going to look at um, how much light the interior surfaces of our building are getting from just the outside light of the environment. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to think about analyzing the floor plates of our building one at a time. And to do that, we need to first create some kind of fenestration system to, um, to clad our building. Because right now we just have these kind of solid mesh. We want to somehow um, create openings within that mesh to let light pass through. And then we want to isolate two floor plates at a time. We're going to have the floor plate that we do the daylight analysis on. And we're going to have the ceiling above to keep light out. And we're going to have just have the sandwich, and we're going to pass that to Ecotech to do the lighting analysis for just one floor. And that's one kind of limitation is that it will do this one um, floor at a time. Because we're doing this in Grasshopper, you can think about ways um, to automate that and actually do all the floors at once. But I'm going to leave that to you to, uh, to figure out. I'm just going to do one floor as, a, as an example. OK, so um, first thing we'll do is set up some of our geometry to feed into, a uh, into Ecotext. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a fenestration system to modulate the amount of openings in my facade. So right now I have this setup where I have this mesh. And the mesh is composed of some resolution of these quad panels. I'm just going to think, for simplicity's sake, of these panels as panels in my building. And I'm going to create a kind of a simple definition to either turn these panels on or off according to some parameters. So the first thing I'm going to do is create another explode mesh component. I'm going to feed my mesh into here. And this will basically explode all my surface into my, um, my components or my, my individual panels. The next thing I'm going to do is create a random uh, factor to dictate whether the panel is on or off. So this is going to be randomized, but you can create your own ways of dictating openings in the building. This is just the kind of easiest and quickest way to do it. So I'm going to create first a uh, random component. So random will uh, take a range, so here's 0 to 1, and it'll create a certain number of random values within that range. So you feed it basically a number of values that you want, and it'll create uh, that number of random values within a certain range. Um, and then the seed will uh, kind of dictate which random values they are. So the, the values themselves will be random, but if you keep the seed constant, it'll always generate the same random numbers. So this way you can recreate and make sure the geometry stays the same. It doesn't change every time you, you reload your script. So for the number, I'm going to create one random number for each panel. So here I have 420 panels. I'm going to create a list length component, feed in this panel output. This will tell me how many panels I have, and I'm going to plug that into the number. So now I'm creating um, 420 random values between 0 and 1. One option in random, if you right click, is to turn on integer numbers. And this will constrain random to only give you integers. You can do the same thing with a rounding component, but this will it's integrated within random. So now it's always going to give me either 0 or 1 random length, basically. Um, once I have those uh, zeros and 1s, I'm going to create a dispatch component. And dispatch will take a list of um, objects, and it will place them into the, either the A or the B group according to a true-false Boolean list. Um, and in Grasshopper, zeros and ones behave the same exact way as trues and, true and falses. So what I've done here, really, if I, if I plug in these random numbers into the pattern, I've just created a logic for 
grouping the, the panels either into group A or group B. And then I can just use group A for my solid panels and a group B will become my uh, transparent panels. You can't visualize this yet because this dispatch component contains both streams. If we create a, a, just a mesh kind of container, plug the A into there and hide this, then you'll start to see how this works. So now I've created like an even system of fenestration. Because I'm creating values from zero to one, there's gonna be a um, nearly equal number of on and off panels. If I want to have more control over how this works, I can plug in a higher number for the random range. So here's zero to one. If I plug in a higher number here, so I'm just gonna create a slider. So I did this before, I know what a good range is. I'm gonna create it from 0.6. I'm gonna start it at one. And then I'm gonna end the slider at uh, eight. Point zero. So this slider I'm going to plug into my range. And you can think about what this does conceptually. As the range goes from 0 uh, to 1 to higher, everything above 1 will be a true statement. So we're going to get more and more things that are true, and we're going to get more and more geometry in the A category, and thus we're going to get more and more solid panels. So this is just one way of modulating sort of the density of our openings in our building. Obviously this is random and probably like it's not so <laughs> such a good argument for a building to create your fenestration randomly. But just for the case of a, of a demonstration, it's a quick way for us to see what happens as we get uh, more and more solid with our building. So now we have our fenestration system. The last thing we need to do is um, pull out a couple of these plates to be our analysis floor and then our ceiling, which will keep the light out from coming up on top. So to do that, we'll go back to our, uh, here we have our floor geometry. These are boundary surfaces. So we need to do two things. First of all, we need to extract just the floors that we want and we need to convert them to meshes so that they work within the Ecotect analysis. Okay, so I'm again just going to create a geo container and plug in these boundary floors. And this will allow me to just drag this geometry down into where I'm working with it down here. And again, if I want to organize things or make it look nicer, I can always hide that wire. So now I have my floor geometry sort of ready to be integrated with this workflow. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is select the floor I want, and I'm just gonna use a uh, list item node, plug in my list of floors. I can hide all these floors here. This by default will just give me the first one because it's defaulted at the zero index. I'll just create a slider, uh, plug it into the eye, and now this will allow me to select my floor. Um, if you go higher than the number of floors, you know, it'll start to wrap around, which if you're automating this and you want to analyze every floor, you want to make sure it's coordinated to the number of floors, you can change this range of the slider uh, to match your number of floors. Um, for now, I'm doing this manually, so I don't really care that it's wrapping, I'm just gonna use this to select manually my floor. Okay, so this is selecting my floor that I wanna analyze. So I can actually rename this node so I remember this is my floor here. I'm gonna duplicate that. And this I want to be my ceiling. And the ceiling is always one above the floor. So instead of making another slider, I'm just gonna create an addition component. And just type plus one. This will create an addition component where the B operator is defaulted to one. I'll plug in my three here, now I get a four, and I'll plug this into the index, and I'll rename this ceiling. Okay, so what I have now is basically a setup where I can specify a floor, and it'll give me that floor geometry and the floor above it as my ceiling. And then I'm just gonna create two mesh components uh, and these are just the standard mesh um, uh, containers and plug in my surfaces here. This will give me a kind of a generic conversion from a surface to a mesh, which in my, in this case, it's, it's fine. Um, sometimes we want to have more control over how the meshing happens. Uh, but in this case, the general conversion is okay. If you want to see what that looks like, we can do preview mesh edges again. You can see that's given us this like basic triangulation. Um, and since we're not really using this geometry in our model, this is just to take it into Ecotech. Um, this is okay. Just hide those. Okay, so now we have our floor. We have our ceiling mesh. 
and we have our facade meshes. And so now we have all the geometry we need to basically plug into the daylight analysis. Uh, 